Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Elder Scrolls Online PTS patch notes video with me Sherman. Today we're taking a look at the 7.2.0 patch notes, but things are going to be done a little different. Now this patch notes is for the Gates of Oblivion story, uh, reaches its climatic finale in the Deadlands DLC, and we're going to stop there because I don't want to know the rest. <laughs> What we're going to do is we're going to actually move down here to the sets. Now these are the new sets being added with the Deadlands DLC. I'm excited for them. I think that all of them sound really good in their own right and would potentially work for many different builds. So let's go ahead and get started by talking about the crafted sets. Wretched Vitality. This is can be crafted in any armor type, so light, medium, and heavy. The two-piece adds max ma uh, adds sorry magic recovery. The three-piece adds stamina recovery. The four-piece adds weapon and spell damage. Now the five-piece is really cool. While in combat, applying a major buff or debuff to a target grants you 260 magic and stamina recovery for 15 seconds. While in combat, applying a minor buff or debuff to your to a target grants you 130 magic or stamina recovery for 15 seconds. Now, a lot of you gonna say. Yeah, but where is that going to play good? Where is that set useful? Well, it can be useful in a lot of different ways. From somebody who struggles with resource management, this is a good set for them because it gives them that resource management capability. And the fact that it adds a little bit of weapon and spell damage adds, them, adds that extra little bit of oomph to their build, which is really nice. And I think that's really good. And I love how it has the stam and mag, mag recovery in the two and the three piece. Moving on to the Deadlands Demolisher. Also can be crafted in light, medium, and heavy. Two piece adds max stamina. Three piece weapon and spell damage. Four piece more max stamina. And then the five piece. And I love this five piece because of the way you can make it work with a lot of different builds. So the five piece... Your bash attack deals 935 base or more damage when you bash. You also deal physical damage and a cone in front of you, interrupting all enemies' hit. This effect can occur once every two seconds and counts as bash damage. Now, of course, a lot of people are going to look at this set and say it's a tank set. I don't see it as that. I see it as a good interruption set. This would be good for PvP and also PvE in dungeons, trials, and Overland. Great all-around set for somebody who wants that extra, like, interruption capability. I love it. I think it's good. I think the game needed a set like this. And the fact that you can make it in any armor type makes it even better. Moving on to Iron Flask. Now, this one is interesting. So, two-piece adds max health, three-piece max health, four-piece adds armor, and then when you drink a potion while in combat, you reduce your damage taken by 12% for 20 seconds. That is a big damage reduction for 20 seconds. Now, we all know that resistance reaches a cap at 33,000. And so this damage reduction, is it, does it apply on top of that reduction? Because if it does, this can make... Begin, like a beginner tank, a really good set to start with because of the fact that you're going to be using potions to keep your resources coming in. Like your, your health, your magic, your stamina, whatever race or class you're playing, it's going to be a good, good set for that. But that 12% damage reduction really helps tanks who aren't quite at that 33,000 cap reach a good damage mitigation. And does it also apply to shields as well? Because if you're using a shield tank, and not a block tank, not somebody using sword and shield, but somebody who's actually actively using shields to mitigate damage, does this apply to the damage being coming off your shields as well? This is something that needs to be tested, and I plan on looking into it. Overland, Eye of the Grasp. Now this is the light armor set. So it adds on the two piece, Max Magica, Three piece weapon and spell damage, four piece critical chance, and then the five piece. When you deal critical damage, you generate seven ultimate. This effect can occur once every five seconds. Now this right here is something that a lot of people are going to say. Why is this on a light set? 
The people who need the ultimate the most are tanks and healers. Yes and no. Yes, tanks and healers to pop off their war horns for that situation, but for most people, being able to drop your ultimate every chance you get is going to be great. Because this will greatly in increase not only your DPS, but your burst capability with that ultimate. So it's actually a really good set for that purpose. And it's and now that it has the crit chance and the weapon and spell damage, yes, getting in a little bit of extra max magic wouldn't hurt even somebody in medium or heavy armor. It's a good all-around set. So I really like that they did that. And even light armor. <clears throat> Alright, Hexo's Ward, medium armor. Two-piece adds critical chance, three-piece adds weapon and spell damage, and the four-piece crit chance. Five-piece dealing critical damage with a direct damage ability grants you a damage shield that absorbs 8,177 damage for six seconds. This effect can occur once every six seconds. Holy moly. So, I, I might be switched with sets because that's awesome. And I'm going to tell you why it's awesome. I play a two-handed tank. When being a two-handed tank, I use really high crit and high weapon damage for one ability to get a larger shield. This makes it to where if I do get that shield on that crit swing, I get another one on top of it, which adds to my capability of tanking, and it's the shield's stack. So I can stack multiple shields, giving me a greater basically like health pool but not that they have to beat through to get to my actual health this makes tanking with like two-handed bows stabs really good and even dual if you want to tank that way but dual tanking with shields is really complicated compared to two-handed and stabs um it's a lot easier with a two-handed and, and that Oh, new drivers. Look at that. Wow, cool. Thank you. All right, moving on. Kai Marcher's Cruelty. This is the heavy armor um, drop. So Now, if you guys don't know how these sets work, how they drop, so the light armor will drop at any of the world bosses, delve bosses, dungeon bosses, uh, or, you know, like any, any bosses, chests, and events. So like the portals that are going to be in the area, you can go in there and you have a chance of getting some of this stuff. Now, certain item parts of these things, like certain, like your weapon, the weapons, the armor, the rings, all that stuff will drop in different categories or groups of, of events or things within the game. So you have to play all of it to, in order to get every piece of it. All right, so, I'm, oh, Kin Marches. Cruelty, heavy. Two piece, max health. Three piece, stam recovery. That's interesting for a heavy set. And then adds armor. Now, I like the armor. I like the max health. I, I have to say it. I like the stam recovery. All right. When you deal direct damage, you may apply, you apply any. You apply one of five. Okay, I thought I said any. Sorry. My, my bad, my brain. Um. Apply one of five random major debuffs to enemies within 8 meters of you for 18 seconds. This effect can occur once every 8 seconds, and only if an enemy is in range. Eligible debuffs are Major Breach, Major Cowardice, Major Defile, Major Maim, and Major Vulnerability. What? <laughs> like, that's a kind of a... And I, I'm going to say it. It's kind of an OP set because it has an 18-second... Timer with an 8 second cooldown. So that means every 8 seconds you're going to be applying a major debuff to these enemies. I know it's on heavy armor, but even somebody like, say, PvP, or even somebody who plays PvE and solos a lot and plays that more defensive solo play, this is really good for that. Sorry, but it is. And does it apply to multiple targets if you hit multiple targets, or is it just one enemy at a time? Nope, debuffs enemies within 8 meters. Whoa, that's powerful. Could you imagine that? You apply Major Breach, 
the first time. You apply Major Defile the second time, and then you apply Major Vulnerability the third time, and within eight seconds of each other. So the eight seconds for the first one, and then 16 seconds on the second one, and then at 24, you're going to be applying another one. So you're constantly going to have a good um, application of debuffs. And in raids, or in trials, sorry, and in dungeons against bosses, that's going to be really good. Especially for like a support type character. Now, I'm not saying a support healer or a support tank. I'm talking a support character, period. This would be a good set for that. And with the stamina recovery, this allows you to get that better stamina recovery. Especially if you build a little bit for it. Like being a Wood Elf. Or being um, a Khajiit. Or being a um, person, like somebody who has a lot of, of, of things that give you stamina recovery. Like that's going to be really good for that. Wow, that's crazy. Alright, moving on. So we're going to skip all this because I don't want to, I don't want to do, to like talk about something that's going to, interfere with my me learning about it in the game i know it sounds weird so this new system amazing system the armory system a new system that helps relieve the friction between switching or experimenting with your character's builds the armory allows you to save any of your custom character builds and remembering your gear attributes abilities champion points and even if you are a werewolf or vampire you can effortlessly load any of those saved builds in an instant. The armory is free to all players. To get started, simply obtain the free armory station from the crown store and place it in any of your homes. The armory assistant, um, whatever, is also available for a separate purchase to access all the functions of the armory outside of your home. Note, you, can save, you cannot save or load builds without interacting with an armory station or talking to an armory assistant. That's a lot to take in. Now, they said that there's going to be up to 10 available builds that you can have going. So, basically, you can have a build for Overland DPS or Overland Play. You can have a build for tanking. You can have a build for um, PvP. You can have a build for healing. You can have a build for any kind of role you need to be, no matter how you play. That is pretty cool. I like it. I'm happy. That's good. Curated item set drops. Now this one. This one. When you guys put in <laughs> the thing that allowed us to get, like, get the sets, have the uh, sets in our, like, where we can learn the sets and then craft them at any time at a um, transmutation station, you guys should have put this in the game. This would have made it even better because then people could have farmed their sets more efficiently. Now, I understand why they probably didn't do that, because they didn't think about it at the time, and they wanted to see how the set um, unlock thing worked within the community. And they probably seen a lot of people struggling getting specific items to drop, which is understandable. I have farmed many hours in this game to get specific items to drop, and... Yeah, it's not fun. So this is going to definitely be a really good thing. It basically makes it to where it will drop items that you haven't learned in your item set um, collection. So that's really cool. Item set collection summary. To complement the new curated item set drops, we've added a summary page to the item set collections UI. This is a high-level summary of your progress towards collecting every drop set item in the game. Every major category for the progress help bar to help guide you, blah, blah, blah. Really cool. Now, there is some new mythic items coming into the game. I'm, I'm excited, but not, because I don't really like the, uh, um, the archaeology system. I think it's, it's cool, but at the same time, I think it's garbage. I, I don't know if that's, it's, it's, if that's the right way to say it. Um, but that's how I feel. Like, I, I think it's a good addition if it was done better. I think the way it's done is too overly complicated, even though it can be really simplified and dumbed down. Like, so, the new items, the uh, Markin Ring of Majesty. 
only got one thing, so gain 100 weapon spell damage and 1,157 100, armor for each 3 set bonus active on the wear. <clears throat> so, a 3 piece jewelry or weapon set, a 5 piece set, a monster set, and that counts as 3. So you would get 300 armor and 3,000 and something armor on top of that that's a good set now the devs do have a little note down here um this set effect counts for every three to five piece set in which you are wearing a minimum of three of the pieces for example wearing three pieces of agility gear as a three set bonus to the wear wearing three pieces of hunting's rage counting as a three and a five uh or wearing a five piece hunting's rage like it's really cool that they did that all right south of the czar or bell Harza's Bingham. Balharza's Bingham. Okay. Increase the damage of your light attacks by 1185. When you deal damage with consecutive melee light attacks, gain a, tip, a stack of Belhazar's Temper for 10 seconds, up to 5 stacks max. When you perform a fully charged heavy attack, consume Belhazar's Temper and deal physical damage per stack to enemies in a line after a 1 second delay, stunning them for 3 seconds. It's stacked. <laughs> If stacks, five stacks are consumed, this effect can occur once every four seconds and scales off your higher, off the higher of your weapon and spell damage. Okay, I gotta read this again, hold on. And deal physical damage per stack to enemies in a line. How much damage is that per stack? That's, that's something they left out of the tooltip here. Alright, that's cool. It sounds cool, I like it. Um, yeah. I wonder if it is this 1185 per stack. That's a lot of damage. Uh, Spalder of Ruin. Activating crouch toggles on and off a 12 meter aura of pride. Up to 6 allies in the aura. Gain 260 weapon and spell damage. Reduce your weapon and spell damage by 130 every for every group member benefiting from your aura of pride. Alright. So the, the set itself sounds good but it has a negative di uh, a, dif a negative effect which hmm I, I don't know how I feel about it honest the the concept is cool I like the idea of it but I as the negative effect I feel it would is gonna put a lot of pressure on people to make this a tank item or a or a healer item. I don't know. It's, it's just... Let's see what they have to say. Only activating crouch toggles or pride on or off. Existing... Exiting crouch will, to, will not toggle this set on or off. So activating crouch toggles the aura pride on or off. Okay, so you have to just crouch. Alright. Map update. Oh, this is cool. Activate Dark Angers and Sky Shards. Our active Dark Anger and Sky Shards will now appear. Now, they aren't... Sky Shards don't appear just, like, willy-nilly. We'll get to that. So, Dark Angers will now appear active on the zone map, similar to Harvest Storm, or Vessel Geysers. Awesome. Thank you. Sky Shards will now appear on the map and compass when you approach them. Why couldn't you have done that earlier? Like, that's just... Ugh. I, I'm glad they're adding it. It, it. It'll be nice. And then additionally, the zone guide will direct you to the closest unrequired or unacquired sky shard when you have completed the other objectives in the zone. Cool. Not caring about all this stuff. And it's not that I don't care. This is really cool too. If you have an NVIDIA DLSS and DLAA, DLAA support, this will be good for people. Um, hopefully it'll, it'll fix some things, you know, with the game running. But don't know. Event testing, they're testing the Indominus Celebration, so if you guys want to check that out on MPTS, please do. This will be really good and helps the uh, development team. Template information, this is just basically stuff I've already read. I, I did it because I, I, I'm going to be on PTS the next couple of days, uh, or a week, or a month, I don't know. However long it's on there. I'll be bouncing between it and the live game. Alright, moving on. No, 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 no. There's so much... So much, so many bug fixes and fixes that they've done with dungeons and, and different things throughout the game. It's crazy how much they're constantly fixing. All right, 
Problem at gameplay. Now this is where all the big stuff is. The stuff everyone wants to know about, of course, because we do a lot of combat. So, first off, critical damage and healing now has a hard cap of 125%. Note that the value can go beyond 125%, but your critical strikes will not deal more than 125% damage of healing in total. This is... Thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you. So, currently Critical Chance continues to remain the best stat in the game by a large margin in PvE due to no effective cap on the bonus and a large array of sourcing of critical damage and healing amplification. Rather than nerfing the values of these sources across the board or hurting build choices that aren't overperforming, we've decided to add a ceiling to the effectiveness of critical potency to ensure that stats remain powerful but doesn't continue to experience power creep as we add more options to the build for it in the future. This should have very low impact on, on, on unoptimized builds while also re, re, reigning in groups who are coordinating many sources of those bonuses and producing extraordinary results of damage by, or healing. I think? Like, that's been a problem in this game since day one. Like, Critical Chance has been the main go-to stat for PvE. Alright, made the following adjustments to Bash. The core combat skill now has a cooldown of 333 milliseconds, down from 350. Uh, it means you can cast up to one or three times per second. Reduce the cost to 765. Thank you, that's a great thing. And to ensure that the one to third of a melee spam, one third of a melee spammable, that's great. The damage now scales with a mixture of your physical and spell resistance, plus one extra damage to ensure you're at least zero of these stats. It still hits the target. Okay, so before we continue on, I want to talk about this. This right here, this the damage now scales off a mixture of physical and spell resistance. All right, this makes bash too many feel like it only affects tanks but it's not true even players can use like anyone can use the bash it's not just restricted to tanks remember that and the way you bash if you don't know right click puts you in block and if you're holding it if you press the left click it will bash and that's with a, a, a mouse I don't know what it is like on a uh, controller because I don't play on console right now, so I don't remember really what that is. So, Reduce the cooldown phase after activating bash that prevent you from casting other acti active abilities to 33, 30, yeah, down to 700 milliseconds for smoother gameplay when utilizing. Fix an issue where some proc based conditions and uncondition or unintentional succeed when removing negative ground effects and the damage uh, from this can now trigger enchantments and poisons. Now this is where things get exciting with Bash. Bash never was affected by enchants on your weapons, but now it is. So now you have a chance that you, you, you can trigger your enchants when you Bash. This makes Bash weaving a really good alternative for some roles and classes, or some roles and builds. So that's really cool. Fixed an issue where the caster of an ability using an area of effect technology would be dismounted upon entering an area of their ability. Let this be a reminder that technology often affects us in ways we can never expect. And that is true. And excuse the phone in the background. I did not turn it off. I will be turning it off from now on whenever I am recording. All right. Ash Cloud and it's uh, adjusted the following abilities to use the new area of effect system introduced in update 30, which was the um, chapter release. Ash Clouds and its morphs, Meteor and its morphs, and Stampede and Volley and its morphs. Cool. Ability and item sets that heal, deal damage, and restore resources on a set frequency will, while in an area of effect, will no longer display visual effects on each impact for targets in, the air, in their area. The lowest of an affected sources. So, yeah, that's a lot of crap, man. I'm not gonna go through it all. Um, blah 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 blah. A lot of fixes, and then trying to mount up, trying to mount up, trying to mount up. Sorry, I'm, my brain is not working. 
while teleporting to a way shrine will no longer prevent you from mounting up after the teleport finishes. That was a bug. Alright, Ardent Flame Combustion. Increase the resources granted from this passive to 500 to 1000 Stamina Magicka up from... Yeah! This is going to make that really good. Added a cooldown to uh, 500 milliseconds for each and up to blah blah blah. Okay, that's really cool. Infernal Disability and Cauterize Morph now grant both Major Prophecy and Savagery rather than only Prophecy. Thank you. Now I can have a cool DK. I'm... I'm... Yes. Flames of Wind. This morph now launches three buyers of fireballs out from two. It's lost part of its morph functionality. All right. This is the one that makes me the happiest of them all for the DK. Lava Whip. This ability and source now scale off your highest offensive stats rather than exclusively Magicka based stats. May this finally end the fiery and age old debate over getting a stamina whip. Thank you. Fixed uh, Flame Lash, fixed into the morph uh, off balance. Targets were immobilized but not already off balance. The override ability Power Lash now heals immediately rather than two seconds, or than over two seconds, but its total healing per cast has been reduced by approximately 43%. However, Power Lash no longer has a three second cooldown. Um, um, yeah, yeah. Molten Whip. Seething Fury now lasts 10 seconds per stack up from 5 to help it feel less stressful to use in a rotation and to allow for activation of burst at the perfect moment. Yes! Sorry. Um, yeah. Do it. Let's bring it. Magic and Dragon Life Morphs options for Lava Whip currently feel too similar as they both increase the damage of the spammable and deal with 3 second cadence. This Molten Whip now stands out more as a build-up by deadly burst attack with a more gracious time period to activate. Oh man, that is true. That is awesome. World in Ruin, the pass this passive now increases your damage done while flame and poison attacks or with flame and poison attacks by two to five percent rather than increasing your damage done with area of effect. Flame attacks by three to six percent and reducing the cost of your poison abilities by two, twelve and twenty-five percent. That is a much yeah holy cow that just that just made yeah i'm not even gonna read the spoilers because i don't i don't care that just makes dk's that much more of the flame and poison masters and that's cool the way it should have been earth and heart ash cloud now this one i feel a little weird about it so this morph and this ability in this morph now costs 378 magicka every second while active rather than having a massive upfront cost of 5,670, keeping their cost pre, per second relatively the same while removing the penalty to, of having to recast the ability aside from losing a global cooldown. These abilities now tick 15 times over their duration down from 16 while the total damage or healing per cast remains relatively the same. This ability now lasts 15 seconds at base rather than 12, and these abilities now rank up 1.1% healing and damage per rank rather than 1 second. Eruption. This, uh, this Amorph's initial hit damage now takes 10 second cooldown to prevent it from turning into an incredibly low cost AoE spammable. Agreed. Battle Roar. This passive now restores 25 to 50 health magic and stamina per ultimate rather than. Oh, that's a. That's good. Oh, wow. Besides the, the 1,000 stamina and magicka back when casting certain abilities, now you get the. Wow. Okay, Gravelord. Increase the damage of this ability and s'mores by approximately 10% per tick to each. Uh, they tick 10 times and so 11. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, really cool. I'm glad Boneyard needed it. Needed a. I, I wanted to say a, a damage per tick increase. Assassination, Grim Focus. This ability in the Swords downgram 1% damage done per stack rather than 2% critical damage and healing per stack. I think I would have left it the 2... Like, I would have made it 1% damage and healing per stack instead of the 2%. Like, that's just my thing. Shadow, Path of Darkness, Twisting Path. This ability now, uh, damage now scales dynamically with your highest of your offensive stats. What? 
highest of your offensive stats. Twisting path. Okay. If you guys are wondering why I went, what? <laughs> I love twisting path. It's an awesome skill, and I'm glad they did that. Storm calling, lightning splash. They fixed a, something about it. Adric Spear fixed a, the thing with it. Uh, okay, Dawn's Wrath. Backlash disability and swerves visually effects are now visible to the caster and enemies rather than anyone. Okay. Restoring light, cleansing ritual, increase the scaling coefficient of the on this ability and its morphs by approximately 17% since they tick six times instead of 17 or seven. Oh, okay. That's cool. Green balance, emerald moss, yeah. Vampire Mistborn, this ability has more damage reduction now only works against player attacks rather than any attack to prevent an, it from invalidating many threats in PvE encounter. Ooh, that's going to hurt a lot of vampire tanks. I know some vampire tanks that use that for the purpose of mitigating damage. That's going to be really bad now. Champion system. Pain's Refuge. The star now reduces your damage taken by 2% for every 2 negative effects on you rather than 1% per negative effect, while the cap still remains 20%. Shieldmaster fixed an issue where the node did not apply to Sun Shield and its morphs, or Crystallized Shield and its morphs. That's going to be really good. Thank you. That's going to help a lot of people out. Warfare. Cutting defense. The damage from this node now can now proc weapon enchantments or poisons in, in efforts to help it make it more enticing for tanks who want to trigger the, these effects more reliably without dropping block. Okay, I like it. I, I mean, really? If, if a tank it has to hold block 90% of the time, they're not tanking. No offense to those who believe that's the way tanking should work, but you're not tanking. You're wasting your time trying to block damage that doesn't exist. That's the truth of it. All right, itemization and item sets. Fixed an issue where some tooltips would display improper values where when wearing a combination of perfected or non-perfected versions of a set. Okay, Item sets that proc off damage shields now work with hardening enchantments for consistency as many of these sets were inconsistent with this behavior. Ah, that's cool. I'm not even going to read these next two fixes. We're going to look at this. No, just kidding. Um, fixed issue where many sets required you to drink a potion only worked when you, you were actively looking at another target. Your enemies will no longer judge you for being in combat. Fixed an issue where many sets that required critical strikes could proc off other sets or off other procs. That's good. Okay, the following rules will now be followed with items, sets with applicable and has been applied to all existing sets. Sets that grant weapon and spell damage now grant both. Sets that grant physical or spell penetration now grant both. And sets that grant weapon and spell critical now grant both. And they explain here a little of the reason why. As seen in recent updates, improving character hybridization has been a focus by the team in efforts to better bring to life the mantra of play the way you want. This is another large-scale effort done to help better realize th that statement. Item sets should empower you to get excited to build and experiment different things and fit into your character as a myriad of ways oh in a myriad of ways and we hope this helps do that better yes it will but we'll see <laughs> item sense that scale off weapon and spell damage max magicka and stamina can now again critically strike Item sets that scale in order of magnitude or based on additional modifiers such as Reliquin or Zons will not critically strike. Many of these sets have been have received adjustments to their power as well. Below is a, are the sets that can critically strike and have their scaling values reduced by approximately 5%. In a, another number, if another number is listed next to a set name, uh, that is the true value change. So... Arena weapons, frenzy momentum, reduce the damage by approximately 28%. Stacked, uh, stacks now grant 30 weapon and spell damage up to 10 times rather than 38. 
damage, uh, weapon damage up to five times. So that's, wow, that's really high. Merciless charge, reduce the damage taken, uh, damage, reduce the damage by less than 1% per tick, and now it takes over seven seconds rather than five. And then Wild Impulse was uh, affected by this. Crafted sets, Ashen Grip, Cold Harvest Favor, Dragon's, uh, Dragon's Appetite, Eternal Hunt, Legacy of Karth, Merk uh, Merkledon, Nocturnal's Favor, Oblivion Soul, Redistributor, Shalador's Curse, and Vampire's Kiss are all affected by the crit thing. Dungeon and, and Arena, Aegis Caller, Auroran's Thunder. This set now lasts 5 seconds and ticks every second with a 10 second cooldown, rather than lasting 3 seconds, ticking every half second with a 6 second cooldown. Increase the damage of the set by approximately 94% per tick, and increase the Arc of the Cone by 90. That's going to make Aurora's Thunder, Aurora's Thunder really powerful. Azure Blight Reaper, Caloran's Legacy. This set now only procs off light and heavy attacks instead of a single target direct damage. Curse of Dolomesh, Draugr's Rest, Flame Blossom, uh, Hades Hearth, Ice Conjure, Oblivion Edge, Overwhelming Surge. Reduce the damage by approximately 3% per tick. That's, okay, that's good. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Pestilent Host, Pillar of Mern, Plague Slinger, Rush of Agony, Savage Werewolf, Savage, uh, Sav Scavaging Demise, Sheer Venom, uh, it should be Sheer Venom, not Vendom. Thunder Flame, Ice Furnace, Thunder Collar. What did Thunder Collar? Reduce the initial damage by approximately 75% and increase the damage over time by approximately 19% per tick. This sent out takes one extra time over its duration but properly respects the line of sight. Okay, that's cool. And then Unleash Terror, Viper Sting, Widowmaker, and Winterborn. All those sets are affected by the increased crit chance. Monster Mass. This one got me giggling. Chokethorn now can crit heal. Dama House can crit heal and deal crit damage. Earth Gore. This set now better follows standards of for overtime effects and has a two second delay before starting to heal up from one second. Reduce the frequency to two seconds up from one while increasing the healing per tick to ensure the total healing of the duration is approximately 5% less as intended. And the tool tip now more accurately states the behavior of the set's healing sorting. So that's kind of cool. Ice Heart. Figured it would get that. Alombris, Infernal Guardian, um, Jalnar's Nightmare, Frogs, Maw of the Infernal. Increase the damage by approximately 2% per hit. All damage attacks have been properly streamlined to deal with uh, the same DPS and are now named Maw of the Infernal for easier tracking in combat logs. Nirnith, Night Flame, uh, Prior Thleric. I can't even say that. Selene Silatrix. Yes. Spawn of Mafala. This is one I'm really excited about. Increase the damage by approximately 10% per tick. This set no longer snares enemies. This is really cool. Stone Husk. Storm Fist. This, the damage from the set no longer bypasses spell resistance on the final hit. That's really good. Vulcan Scoria. Veladrith. Reduce the damage by approximately 21%. That's going to make Veladrith a little bit weaker than what it was before, but it brings other sets into its same space of, of capability and damage. So like Vulcan Scory is actually going to be more comparable to Veladrith. Celatrix is going to be more comparable to Veladrith. Selene's is going to be more comparable to Veladrith. So that's really good. Even though Veladrith has a multiple target hit thing now. Overland, uh, Bri Briarheart, Deadlands Assassin, Defiler, Drugger's Heritage, Mad Tinker, Night Terror, Shadow of the Red Mountain, awesome. Uh, Storm Knight's Plate, I'm glad of the change they made to Storm Knight's uh, recently. I'm really, really happy for that. Uh, Serious Scales, Thunderbug gets the crit chance. Oh man, I gotta tell Killer Mech about that. He's, he's gonna be happy. That's gonna make the Tesla tank that much better, guys. Trinamax Valor, Twin Sisters, Unfallible Darkness, Venomous Smite. This set now has a two second delay before dealing damage rather than none while increasing damage per tick to ensure it meets its new increased or its new intended value for approximately 5% less. Way of Fire, I'm happy Way of Fire got, got this. And then, uh, yeah, that one's Winter's Respite. Why they misspell that, I don't know. I mean, if you're in a hurry, you're going to misspell it. PvP Sourced. Affliction, 
Almalek's is, is Mercy, increase the healing by approximately 17%. Protect Galarin's Revenge, reduce the damage by uh, done by less than 1% and stacked. Uh, stack cooldown is now 0.5 instead of 1. Kind's Kiss, the heal now scales off your max magicka or stamina, whichever is higher, rather than a flat value. The stamina restore is still based on the item level. Phoenix, uh, the Viking of Venom, uh, Vice Cannon of Venom, and then Vicious Death. And then last but not least, Trial Sets. Destructive Mage, Poisonous Serpent, Roar of Alkosh, and Twilight Remedy are all affected by the crit chance on their damage. There is a developer comment here. I don't want to read it. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm just kind of like burned out from reading those. But let's move on. Item Sets that deal a burst of damage in 4 seconds or less now have a 1 second window after procking that prevent similar item sets from activating. Item sets that have an innate counterplay, such as delays, minimum time, travel times, warning telegraphs, have a one second or no cooldowns, are exempt from the from this adjustment. Uh, if wearing multiple of these sets at once, any action that would activate multiple sets will instead trigger the first set equipped and surpass the others for one set or yeah, suppress the others for one second. After that second passes, you will be able to attempt to trigger them again. The sets affected by this change are listed below. Yeah, so Affliction, Ashen Grip, Curse of Dolomesh, Deadlands Assassin, and now has, uh, damage over time has a two second delay up from one second. Defending Warrior, uh, Frenzying Momentum, Hrothgar's Chill, Krogs, Poisonous Serpent, Song of Lamia, Stormfist, Sirius Scales, Thunderbug's Carabus, Thundercaller, Viperstein, Way of Fire, and Winterborn. Now, the nice thing about a lot of these changes is there's some cool stuff people will be able to do to give them unique play style with these sets in a singular fashion, which is going to be great. Instead of trying to stack multiple procs, just using one of those is going to be fantastic. Alright, don't really worry about the developers coming. Item, set, uh, item traits, chain charged, increase the potency of this trait to 480% up from 220 to ensure that it is more competitive with other traits in terms of effectiveness. This is uh, one I really want to talk about. So currently, this trait is being engaged with mainly by Dragon Knights trying to get as much sustain as they can, and we'd like this trait to be a bit more than a one-note wonder. Now it should be help empower those crafty status effect builds out there that have some better synergy with effects that activate off of them. I agree. Ability Altering Weapons, Chaos Whirlwind, rework this set, Special Activate. It now grants the stack of Chaotic Whirlwind for 5 seconds after casting Whirlwind. While in combat, granting 5% movement speed per stack and increase your weapon and spell damage by 6 for every 1% bonus movement speed. And you have, to, uh, you have up to a cap of 450. That's a lot. The effect can stack 5 times, and upon reaching 5 stacks... The duration doubles, uh, doubles, but cannot be refreshed. Okay. Doesn't make a lot of sense when they say 5 seconds after casting Whirlwind in combat, you gain 5% movement speed, and then you get one, you get 6 weapon damage for every 1% bonus movement speed, and it caps at 450, and you can only have it 5 times. So... Okay. Yeah, it would probably come out close to 450 then. Or it would come out to 450. I'm not going to do the math right now. Uh, concentrated Force. This set now requires successive casting of Force Shock within 5 seconds of each other for up from 2 to allow for more breathing room in real combat rotation. That's really cool. Crafted. So, Mechanical Acuity is getting an upgrade. This item now grants a stack of Mechanical Acuity for 4 seconds whenever you deal non-critical damage, granting you... 20% uh, chance per stack up to once every half second after the effect ends or reaches 5 stacks. It cannot occur again for 25 seconds. Also, the Assassin's Guile, an issue with minor, where minor heroism granted by poisons, was not properly buffed by this set. It is now. Way of the Arena, this 5-piece bonus from this set will now also grants up to 165 weapon install damage. Alright. Dungeons and Arena. 
Elemental Succession. This set now grants bonus randomly per element. Bonus is randomly per element when you deal a source of flame frost shock rather than firing each bonus independently per element. Okay. Miter gla Mighty Glacier fixed an issue where this uh, poison potions was not proccing. Okay. Worms Remnant. This set's two piece bonus is now magic recovery rather than spell damage to match here. Seen this veneer. Stupid idea. That's. I mean, I'm going to cut it straight out and say it. That's a stupid idea. Trying to make sim too many sets similar is what is a problem. You don't want too many sets to feel, feel similar. You want them to feel different because of their five-piece bonuses. Fixed an issue where this set's damage was considered melee rather than ranged. Okay, that's cool. <sighs> Updated some monster mask sets, masks to use the correct terminology, guys, mask, or vestige, depending on their weight. So light, medium, and heavy. And those are the ones that are affected by it. Dama House, this set now fires both flame and physical damage rings at the same time and half the original damage and grants weapon and spell damage while standing inside. Maybe I was wrong about this one. I thought this did a heal and... Okay. Like, had one or the other. So it's... I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fire and physical. So, yeah, that's really cool. I like it. If he sourced... Dark Convergence. Reduce the set's damage by approximately 59%, but increase the scaling per target to 50%, up from 10%. Reduce the radius of the effect to 10 meters, down from 12. This set now pulls once after its delay, rather than twice over its duration. Uh, the pull now pulls all nearby targets rather than 6 per pull, so it remains effective against large groups. Cool. Deadly Strike. Reduce the set's damage done bonus to over time and channeled abilities to 15% down from 18. All right. Fixed an issue where this set did not proc off some attacks such as acid spray. Cool. Wrath of the Imperium, this set now grants 129 weapon and spell damage for its two piece and 325 weapon and spell damage to ranged direct damage attacks for its three piece rather than 657 spell critical and spell critical for their loose attacks. Okay. Chaotic Whirlwind updated the audio associated with this set and Mantle of Soria. This set now only procs off light and heavy attacks rather than a source of a single target direct damage. Cool. And that is pretty much it. There's a bunch of base game fixes, improvements. I'm not going to go through all that stuff. Not that it doesn't bother me, but here's my opinion on, on patch notes. If you want to know about patch notes besides the stuff I talked about, you can read them. Now, I'm not trying to be rude or sarcastic. It's just that's how I am in reality, and that's how I'm going to be from now on. So, if you guys want to read the patch notes, check the link in the description below. You can read about them yourself and find out more about this other stuff that I didn't want to read because I didn't want to, um, it to affect my, my play through the game. So, I, I, don't, like, I don't like things that, that give me any hints or anything towards what's going on in the game. So. And I've already read through all these uh, once learning about all the, the stuff that's coming anyway, so I didn't want to go through it again. I just wanted to cover the stuff that I felt was important. And I felt like the combat stuff is really important. So. But that's pretty much it for the 7.2.0 patch notes. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you guys know what's coming next. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos by me, you can subscribe. If you do subscribe, I do suggest you click that notification bell to be notified when I post new videos. Other than that, Thank you all for watching. Until next time, have a wonderful day, and this guy might see you in game. Bye.